Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little, and today I'm going to be going over part two of the seventh episode of weeklypokerhand.com. This hand is from a $10,000 buy-in World Poker Tour event at Bellagio that was held in December of 2011. And if you remember from the sixth episode, I sort of won a nice pot off of this kid who had been playing fairly aggressively so far. So we're going to pretend like we're in the kid's shoes today and see how he should have played his hand. So he raises it up with Jack-10, which I think is perfectly fine. I have no problem with raising with a very wide range, especially when the players to my left, who, again, these are not their names, and this is a live tournament, not an online tournament. Um, these players are all very tight, so Kid should be opening pretty wide, unless he thinks I'm going to be owning him a lot. However, Jack-10 is going to be good enough to raise virtually every time. He flops nothing, and anytime you flop nothing, you should tend to continuation bet. On a board like this, I would like to see a bet a little bit larger, because if Jay Cardshark's sitting here with, like, ace high with a spade, which is exactly what I had in this hand, um, he's going to call every time. And if he has ace high with a spade and you bet a little bit larger, you can usually bet, like, 4,000 here, then, like, 8,000 on the turn, and that will probably get your opponent off of the ace high. Whenever you're you're making a bet on one street, you always need to think about how the hand is going to play out in future streets. If you're only thinking on this exact street, you're going to end up getting yourself in trouble. And I've heard a lot of... Not a lot, but some of the older school players talk about, yeah, I think one decision at a time, and they're like proud of this for some reason, but no, poker is a lot like chess. You need to think multiple moves in advance. And if a bet here is like neutral to slightly negative EV, you're going to need to do something on later streets to make up for that. And you need to have a plan in your head for the entire hand. So Kid needs to know what he's going to do on a spade turn, on a jack turn, on a ten turn, on a three of diamonds turn. He needs to know what he's going to do in every spot. And you should generally know that as soon as you make this bet, or before you make this bet. And really, you should know what you're going to do on a lot of flops before you even open pre-flop. You need to have basically like a giant decision tree in your head. And I think a lot of good players sort of work that out over time. Anyways, kid bets, J. Card Shark calls, no problem. Kid turns a gut shot and a bad flush draw. And this is a pretty good bluff card, because if J. Card Shark does have something like, I don't know, 10-7, he's going to fold here a lot of the time. So it's a, it's a pretty good bluff card for that reason. Also, if J. Cardshark has pocket 3, 6, 5, he's going to fold out here. However, if he has the ace of spades, there's no way he's folding now. And if he has some, maybe even like the king or the queen of spades, he might not fold either. So if you're betting here, you're going to need to fire out again on a lot of rivers. But you have to be careful. You know, you really don't want to be spazzing out in $10,000 buying tournaments where... The table is fairly soft, which this table was. So he bets again, J Card Shark calls. At this point, J Card Shark probably does not have a bad pair, unless it has a spade. So he's looking at probably ace high, maybe something like king queen with the king or queen of spades. And um, J Card Shark probably doesn't have the nuts here too often. I, I think you can pretty much discount monsters from J Card Shark's range. So the river's a six, and the kid bets 10,000. And I, right here, I actually do not like this bet, because now, if Jay Karshark has ace high and he's any good at poker at all, he's going to call. And, uh, like we said, I do think the ace of spades is a lot of Jay Karshark's range. Also, if I called the turn with, like, 9-7 with a 9 of spades, if Jay Karshark did, he's going to call again, because if he's calling with ace high, he's obviously going to call with those hands. So, the 6 is a really bad bluff card on the river. I would, I would much rather see a bet on any non-pair card. Like, even... Like, say the river's an ace, king, or queen. I'd rather bluff on those than I would on a six, because now J. Karshark is certainly calling if he has any ace, which I think is a huge amount of the calling range on the turn. So because of this, I really, really hate this river bet. And sometimes, when you have the jack-10, you just have to let it go. And it's never fun whenever you bet the flop in a pretty good bluff spot, bet the turn in a pretty good bluff spot, and expect to be able to three-barrel a lot of the time. Did I say that right? Expect to be able to three-barrel. Um, and you get, like, just the worst river card in the deck to bluff, and it kind of screws you. And that is exactly what happened here. I would be interested to know what he planned on doing if the river was a spade. Like, say the river's a jack of spades. Is he going to check call? Because if, if he checks here, I'm going to bet a nice bet on the river and probably win a pile of money, because I did happen to have the ace spades here. So, this is a pretty cool hand. I think this river bet is fairly bad. Jacob Cardshark does call here and win a nice pot with the ace-queen. Um, I'd love to hear any comments you guys have about this. 
Also, I guess I should have gave this disclaimer first, but this is from a very high stakes poker tournament where everyone's playing at a very high level. This is not the type of play you're going to see at like a standard $100 tournament, live or online. And because of that, I guess I should say don't try this at home. Um, but it's still pretty cool and pretty fun to think about. If you guys have any comments or suggestions about this podcast, please let me know. And also, if you'd like to send in hands of your own for me to go over, I will be more than happy to do that. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.